Now we start to develop a formal language to model some of the structure of English language arguments. The first system we're going to develop will be SL. That's what we'll work on for the next several weeks. SL is short for sentential logic. In SL, capital letters represent entire sentences. Remember that for our purposes, sentences are things that have a truth value. They're either true or false. When we translate into SL, we will have a symbolization key that specifies English language sentences that we can translate to each sentence letter. So for example, this uh, symbolization key gives us the sentence letters G, O, and R. Capital G means the sky is gray. Capital O means the, the sun is out. Capital R means it is raining. The sentence letters are called atomic sentences, using the original sense of atomic to mean unbreakable or having no further structure. In English, these three sentences are related to each other because they're all about weather. In SL, though, G, O, and R don't have anything to do with each other. They just have truth values. For a different problem, we could use the same letters to translate different English sentences. It would make no difference to SL so long as they have the same truth value. A different way of putting it is to say that every atomic sentence in SL is contingent, because in SL it's just something that can be either true or false. When we're translating, we have to make a decision on a specific symbolization key. G can mean the sky is gray, or Georgia is larger than Rhode Island, or anything else we decide we want to make it mean. It can't mean both things at once, but for different problem sets, we can use a different symbolization key. In general, we'll define the symbolization key to capture all of the basic sentences we want to translate. So take that symbolization key about the weather again. The way we get logical structure in SL is by using connectives. So if we look at this sentence, it is raining and the sky is gray, we can't just have R, uh, G. We want to connect the two somehow. We do that with logical conjunction, which we symbolize this way. We read this as R and G. Um, so it's raining and the sky is gray is atomic thought, it's raining, and another atomic thought, the sky is gray. There will be five different connectives in SL. We'll discuss each of them in more detail in upcoming videos, but I'm going to show all five of them to you now. We have negation, which we use to symbolize not, or it's not the case, conjunction, which we use to symbolize and, disjunction, which we use to symbolize either or, the conditional, if, then, and the biconditional, if and only if. And each of these has a different symbol. Since SL is a formal language, we can specify all the meaningful symbols. We've already seen the sentence letters. You can use any letter from A to Z. That gives us 26 sentence letters. But what if we needed more than 26 atomic sentences? We also allow subscripts, so we can have A1, a2, A3, and so on. We can also have B1, B2, B3, B4, C1, C2, and so on. And that means we have as many sentence letters as we need. Strictly speaking, there are infinitely many of them. Although, of course, we're never going to use all of them. In addition to sentence letters, we have the five connective symbols that we saw just a minute ago. Um, finally, we'll have parentheses, and in the next video we can start thinking seriously about how all of these symbols work together when translating from English into SL.